how do you get them to clean without being mean? In this video, I'm going to focus in on some ideas of things you might want to say to your students and some tips of things you might want to do to set your students up for success. Anything you can do to avoid cleanup chaos is always a win in my book. You're probably focused on cleanup and cleanup directions at the end of class, but you're missing out on a great opportunity. Make sure that you teach your routines and show your visuals as you're giving your lesson at the start of class. If you mention that day that you're going to be painting and the paintbrushes are going to be so tired that when they're done working, they're going to go to the paintbrush hot tub, you have a chance to show those visuals. When you mention this again at the end of the class, students will know exactly what you're talking about. A great tip is to have fun names such as the paintbrush hot tub or Pennsylvania where the pencils live. You should set up your room so it's easy for students to clean up. Make things visually easy for you as well to tell if things have been done correctly. For example, I keep my erasers in an ice cube tray so it's easy to tell if one or two are missing. With my scissors, I keep them in an over-the-door shoe holder. So again, if there's an empty pocket, we know that we need to look around for the missing scissors. I show students pictures of how I want my water cups to be stacked at the end of the class in a pyramid. I show this up on the smart board during my lesson, and I also have a picture printed out right above my cabinet where the water cups will go at the end. If you're lucky enough to have multiple sinks be sure to label them for students. Not only do I have numbers here, but I also have a giant crayon of a different color above each sink so that I can guide a student who might be on the other side of the room to go to the sink underneath the big yellow crayon. This is where we keep our paint brush hot tub. Here is a bonus cleanup tip that you are going to thank me for. If you haven't already, paint your trash can and your recycling bin so that it's easier for students to find during cleanup. If you have students that are asking you, where's the trash? Where do I put this recycling? Then you haven't done your job. As a teacher, at the beginning of the year, when you do a cutting project, stop before students even go to their seats and begin cutting and explain that we will be putting the scraps today in the recycling bin. Have everyone stop? and point to where the recycling bin is. Show a picture of that bin up on your slides so that you're certain that students are very clear on what is expected and it will cut down on the cleanup question. Macaroni and cheese, everybody freeze. We're not walking or talking. In a minute, but not yet. We're going to take our paintbrushes and put them in sink number two in the paintbrush hot tub. You're going to take your painting, carefully holding it with two hands like it's a pizza, and walk it to the drying rack. Point to where the drying rack is. When your painting is on the drying rack, you're going to get baby wipes and wipe off your table. When your table is clean, you're going to go and wash your hands, take your art shirt off, and I will know you're ready when you've moved your feet back to your seat. When I turn the lights on, you'll know it's time to clean up and go. Now I'm going to break that down for you, what I did exactly and why. The first thing I do in my cleanup routine is I blink the lights. That catches everyone's attention so there's not someone that doesn't know I'm about to speak to the group and give important directions. So I turn the lights on and off and then back off again. When the lights are off, I teach my students at the beginning of the year that I'll say macaroni and cheese, they'll say everybody freeze, and they will stay frozen. And spoiler alert, I tell them to freeze like Anna near the end of the movie. This helps them to focus on what I'm saying. So I teach them that. I explain that even in your head, if you know what I'm going to say, it's not helpful to start moving around and begin cleaning up because you're making sounds and you're making noises and you're distracting other people that might need my direction. I also might get distracted by you moving and helping 
and I might forget to give some important cleanup directions. So that is why freezing is extremely important. I also explain to my students what to do if they happen to be at the sink washing their hands when I say to freeze. Even the water freezes. So if they hear me say macaroni and cheese, they're to turn off the water. The first thing I say before I give any cleanup directions is we're not walking or talking. This gives the expectation of what they need to do during my directions. That way I don't just jump into the directions and have students talking over me. I also tell the students, we will do this in a minute, but not yet. So they understand that they're not to immediately start doing what I say first. I will give the directions and be extremely clear. I try to refer back to the same words and language that I used when we were starting the lesson, talking about that paintbrush hot tub that I'd shown them a picture of, having them stop and point to where is the drying rack. So they're showing that they understand and that they will be able to be successful to do this on their own without support. I give a very clear signal of what go means during my cleanup. When I turn the lights on, I will narrate this. I'll say when I turn the lights on, that means we are going to begin cleaning up and I flick the lights on. Then I sit back and watch and reinforce what I'm seeing. Now, I'm not calling out students by name. I'm not saying, look, Michael is doing such a nice job of wiping the tables because I might miss someone else that's also doing a very good job and then they don't feel validated. They don't feel seen. So instead, I'm using things like, I notice several people are waiting in line patiently at the drying rack or I see several people have already put back their art shirts or I notice that um, you know, so-and-so is walking and hugging their scissors. Now, if I see someone that is needing a little bit of correction, they're forgetting how we do things, I will say, show me. Show me how you hold the paintbrush. Show me how you walk with scissors. And see if the student can correct that on their own. I can also stop and model those things as my other students are cleaning up independently. During my cleanup, I always try to praise students that are thinking about what comes next. So if I notice that a few students have finished cleaning and they're already sitting back in their seat without my reminders, I make a huge deal out of this. I also really praise students that think about what extra things need to be done. Notice those things and take care of them. So I might say something like, I noticed that um, a few students saw that there were pencils on the floor and they made sure that those were taken care of and put away. That motivates those students to want to help and do those extra things again. It helps to create a caring community that it motivates the other students to want to look out for things above and beyond what you say in your directions, but things that they realize need to be done to care for our class. To end the cleanup, I ring my bell several times and tell the students to move their feet to their seats. When I notice everyone is seated, I'll ring my bell again just once. And that's a signal for students to stop, look, and listen. I tell them that I'm moving the sign from the yellow zone back into the red zone, which means no talking. And this is when we reflect on our cleanup. I'll say, how do you think we did today with cleaning up? Thumbs up, thumbs down, or thumbs to the side? And then we'll have a little bit of a conversation about what things did we notice, if we have time, uh, that went right. And I definitely will point out when I notice people being flexible, when I notice people working together, when I notice people being helpful. And I'll give those specific examples of things that I saw to reinforce that behavior. I will give a point then um, either on the happy side or the sad side for how we did with that cleanup. And the next thing that my students would do is line up. Be sure to check out my video all about lining up next.